Okay, uh, I would like to start by uh, a short introduction of uh, the Rangsels group. Uh, Rangsels is uh, the Nordic leading provider of sustainable environmental solution and consulting services. Uh, it's a large recycling company which operates in uh, Sweden, uh, Norway, Denmark, uh, Estonia, uh, Latvia and Poland. Uh, the turnover is around 4.7 uh, billion Swedish crown, and in the whole group uh, we are uh, around 2,400 employees. Uh, Rang cells operate along the whole waste to value change uh, from collection, uh, collecting around 3.7 million tons of waste to different uh, processings, uh, such as biological recovery, material recycling, energy recovery, and uh, landfilling. Uh, Rung cells offer a wide variety of treatment and uh, solutions. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Rung cells operate in Sweden uh, uh, two landfills. Uh, we have uh, Högbytorp, which is the largest uh, waste treatment facility in Sweden uh, that handles around 850,000 tons of uh, waste per, per year. Uh, Easy Mining Sweden is a company uh, in the Rangsells uh, group. Uh, the main task of Easy Mining Sweden is to uh, develop two in intellectual property technologies into full-scale uh, production plants. And the technologies are uh, phosphorus recovery from sludge ash and uh, resource recovery from uh, uh, ash of uh, municipal uh, waste. In addition to that, we, we uh, uh, conduct uh, uh, research and development uh, activities within the Rang Cells group. Uh, in this presentation, I will focus on one, one of the technologies on, on uh, phosphorus recovery from, from sludge ash. Uh, as you all uh, know, phosphorus is an essential element. Uh, why is it so? Uh, phosphorus is an important component in RNA and DNA. Bones and teeth consist of calcium phosphate. All the energy in biological uh, living organism is based on phosphorus chemistry, conversion of ATP to ADP. Uh, the cell membrane is constructed of uh, phospholipids and also regulation of pH within cells, uh, animal cells is based on, on buffering of uh, phosphate compounds. So there is no life uh, without phosphorus. Uh, in order to, to feed the human population, uh, each year we mine around 170 million tons of rock phosphate, which is the raw material for production of phosphorus fertilizers. Uh, here you can see this is an open pit mi mine in Morocco. Uh, now, th there are two main problems associated with, with mining of rock phosphate. Uh, uh, one is that uh, if you look at the reserves, these are the reserves of the uh, phos rock phosphate. We can see that around uh, 80% uh, is located in the hands of, of a single country. It's uh, Morocco and West Sahara. Uh, in this figure also you can see this is uh, the cadmium content in the rock phosphate that, that most of the world reserves are, uh, uh, have a, a relatively high concentration of cadmium. And in extreme cases it can reach very, very high uh, uh, levels. Uh, in Europe, we import 90% of the phosphorus uh, from outside of Europe. The only active mine in Europe is in Finland, owned by Yara. And in general, uh, there is a continuous decrease in the rock phosphate quality. The, the grade of the phosphate rock is declining due to that uh, uh, the companies utilize the high quality uh, uh, first. Uh, now, rock phosphate is a calcium phosphate mineral. It is not water soluble and therefore not pla plant available. Uh, so, uh, the main task of the phosphorus industry is to convert it into water soluble fertilizers, which are, have a high plant availability. 
And the main process is based on reacting the rock phosphate with sulfuric acid to produce phosphoric acid and a, a byproduct, which is gypsum. And the phosphoric acid is the raw material for production of, of other fertilizers. In this picture you see a uh, phosphoric acid plant in Florida. Uh, a main environmental problem is that, that the phosphogypsum, uh, a large part of it is classified as hazardous waste due to the presence of radium. Uh, and then it is disposed in these uh, uh, large uh, uh, phosphogypsum stocks uh, all over the world. Uh, if we look at the end products, the phosphorus fertilizers, uh, we can see that uh, today uh, ammonium phosphates are the main, uh, the dominant uh, uh, fertilizers. Also, NPK compound fertilizers are composed, uh, the phosphorus component is mainly ammonium phosphate. In the past, we had superphosphate, which are calcium phosphates. Uh, th they were the dominant form, but, but today uh, uh, it is mainly ammonium phosphate. Now, regarding the uh, f lifetime of uh, phosphorus reserves, it is very difficult to, to forecast. Uh, I think that during around uh, 2000, there, were a, there was a large uh, debate uh, concerning peak phosphorus. There was a concern that, that, that uh, within 30 to 50 years, we will reach a, a, a peak in, in, uh, in uh, the phosph uh, phosphate rock production. Uh, in response to, to, to that, the phosphate industry uh, in 2010 did, did uh, an own research, and in, in this uh, uh, research, they, they upgraded the Morocco reserves uh, 10 times. Uh, and with the, these new figures, we ha have around 350 years based on uh, current production capacity and excluding an increase in phosphorus demand. If we include increase in phosphorus demand, then this time period uh, will be considerably uh, shorter. So if we summarize the, this background, uh, phosphate rock is a non-renewable resource and recycling of phosphorus is necessary within a foreseeable future. And also that cadmium and uranium depleted phosphorus reserves are very limited. And today around 85-90% of the cadmium in the raw material ends up in the fertilizers. So the fertilizer quality depends on the, on the quality of the raw material used. Here in Sweden, we, we obtain uh, uh, fertilizers that are originate from Finland and Russia, which have a relatively low cadmium content. But as you could see, the total reserves that are clean are very limited. Most of the world reserves are uh, quite highly polluted uh, with cadmium. Uh, now, you are... Uh, probably familiar with, with, with uh, this picture. This uh, picture shows the population growth. Uh, today we are around 7 billions and we are expected to be around 9 billions in uh, 2050. And this is only due to the uh, children born today. Uh, in this picture, you can also see that uh, the population growth is divided to uh, more developed countries and less developed countries, and also divided to the urban uh, and rural uh, zones. And what we can see is that most of the uh, population growth will take place in less developed countries in the urban zone, which means that uh, there will be more people in, in the cities. We can also see that population growth in the more developed world is, is relatively uh, limited. We have reached uh, almost a steady state. And wh what that means is that, that in future we need to produce more food to feed uh, more people, and for that we will need more phosphorus fertilizers. And uh, 
the demand for increase in, in, in uh, phosphorus fertilizers is estimated to, to be around 2 to 3 percent per year. Now, in this picture, I just uh, listed the, the uh, list of, of, of the large city, mega cities in the world today. Uh, and if we take uh, Tokyo, for instance, for example, it's the uh, biggest city in, in, in the world. Uh, today, we are in, in Tokyo, uh, there are around uh, 37 million pe people living, and we expect to be more than 40 million. Uh, about 50% of the world population today live in, in the urban zone. And if you just take uh, the 600 largest cities, so we have 1.4 billion out of seven lives in 600 cities, which gives a mean uh, value of 2.3 million per city. And w what I want to show with this picture is that uh, the, the, this trend of urbanization uh, uh, makes it difficult to recycle nutrients back to agricultural land. F because you can imagine that to these large cities, if you have uh, cities with 30 million people, we have uh, nutrients coming in food from very far away, uh, imported from different countries, coming with boat, airplane, and trucks, and then we get a lot, a lot of waste in in a, in in a, in a single location, and then it becomes very difficult logistically to transport this waste back to far away to the agricultural land where it was uh, applied. Uh, so my view that that uh, in future we need instead of recycling the waste back we need to extract the nutrients from the waste in a concentrated form that can can uh, be transported over longer distances. But but this this uh, picture shows the the difficulties in recycling nutrients from large urban area. Uh, if we look at the desired conditions for nutrient re recycling between urban settlements and arable land, there are uh, three main uh, uh, desirable conditions. First of all, we would like uh, to have no adverse effect on food quality and environment. We don't want to have unwanted metals, organic pollutants, uh, pharmaceutical and pathogens. We want to have clean nutrients that can be recycled to, to, to arable land. Uh, the nutrient extracted should be in, in an efficient way, uh, should, sh should be uh, plant available, uh, that can be applied in, 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 uh, in a way that we can reduce nut nutrient loss fr from, from the field. And also we need to recover nutrient in a concentrated form, that the re redistribution and spreading will be uh, economical viable. Uh, if we look at phosphorus in seaweed sludge, we can see that it's quite a lot of, of phosphorus that ends up in seaweed sludge. Here are the, the, the figures for Europe and for Sweden we have around 6,500 tons of phosphorus in sludge. And this can be compared to, to less than uh, 10,000 tons of phosphorus applied in form of inorganic fertilizer. I think the figure is much lower today. Uh, so so it's, it's a large amount of phosphorus that we have in, in, in uh, sewage sludge. Um, here we can see the statistics of u the use of sewage sludge in Europe for 2010. And what you can see here is that uh, the main uh, use for, for seaweed sludge are uh, use uh, spreading on farmland, 42%, and incineration, uh, combustion, b burning of seaweed sludge. And then we have uh, disposal <coughs> in landfills and, and uh, disposed in, in, in other way. So, so the, the, the main uh, applications are uh, use on farmland and, and incineration. Uh, if we look at the statistics more in detail 
for Europe, we can see that that uh, the different application of sewage sludge varies from country to countries. Uh, these blue uh, columns here uh, represent use spreading sludge uh, in agriculture, and these yellow are uh, burning of sewage sludge incineration. And as you can see, we have countries that, that the main application is used in sewage sludge, like uh, Portugal, Ireland, for instance. We have other countries like uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, that all the sludge is, is, is burned completely. Uh, we have other countries like, like Austria, Germany, which both spread sludge and incinerate, but the main ap application is, is burning of sludge. And we have also other countries that, like Denmark, for instance, where we, uh, there is both incineration and spreading sludge, but spreading sludge is, is the dominant. Uh, now, there are three main reasons why sewage sludge is being burned today in, in Europe. And uh, one reason is a logistical difficulty to find uh, arable land near big cities. Another reason is that uh, certain countries ha have a surplus of phosphorus within the country. And uh, a third reason is opinion and legislation against the uh, spreading of sewage sludge. And I will give some examples. We have uh, Switzerland, for instance, that in Switzerland there is a ban on the use of sewage sludge in agriculture uh, due to the uh, that sludge can contain contaminants like heavy metals and, and, and uh, organic pollutants. So it is not allowed to spread sludge in agriculture and therefore it is uh, burned. This is in, in, in Zurich, an incineration plant. We have countries like uh, the Netherlands, Holland, where there is a very large uh, animal production in the country. Holland imports a lot of uh, fodder, and there is a lot of manure in the country, and there is a, a generally large surplus of phosphorus. So there is no room for using sludge as a fertilizer in Holland. So in Holland, the, all the sludge is, is incinerated in two plants. I think that 10% of the sludge is composted and sent to Germany for uh, incineration. Here you see this is uh, a one incinerator in Holland that receives sludge from 80 wastewater treatment plants. So th this is an, th the second reason that you have a surplus within the country. A third reason can be demonstrated here. With, uh, here we have East London. This is the Thames River. England is a country that, that, that the opinion uh, towards spreading sludge in agriculture is quite positive. In England, about 70% of the sludge is recycled, spread on agricultural land. But here we see in the east of London, uh, we have the wastewater treatment plant. It generates such a large, I think it handles wastewater from, from uh, over f 5 million people. Uh, the amount of sludge is, is, is very large and there is a difficulty to find available arable land around London that can ac accept the sludge and therefore it is burned in this, this uh, 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 incinerator. And this trend we can see for all the large cities. If we take New York, for instance, in the past they used to dump the sludge in the ocean. When this became unacceptable, there was no way to, to find uh, to, to, to apply all the sludge in arable land and in New York they had to, to build 15 incinerators to, to burn a large part of the sludge. The same is for Tokyo, for instance, all the sludge is incinerated there. So, so these are the three reasons why, why sludge is being, being burned. Uh, there are there are different ways to, to burn sewage sludge. Sewage sludge can be incinerated in dedicated plants, like these ones. These are plants that burned, burn only sewage sludge. And it is a sp special plant that first dry the sludge and then 
incinerate the dry sludge and recycle the, the heat to dry the uh, uh, more sludge coming. Uh, so here we see some example of, of plants that burn only seaweed sludge. In addition to that, sludge can be burned uh, together with wastes, which is done in, in, in certain places. And also, uh, to you, it is possible to use sludge as a fuel uh, during uh, cement production. So it can be burned uh, uh, in, in cement ovens. Uh, what happens then is that we get an undesirable flow of phosphorus is established uh, from the field. We applied fertilizers, we grow crop, it goes to the city, ends up in wastewater treatment plants, and then uh, uh, the sludge incinerated and the ash is being disposed in the landfill. Here you see this is Copenhagen and this is ash of incinerated sludge uh, uh, from Copenhagen. Uh, if we go over to, to Sweden, uh, these are the statistics for Sweden uh, for 2012. What we can see here that around 23% uh, of the sludge was used in agriculture in Sweden. 33% was used to cover landfills and then uh, another 23% plus 14% was uh, to construct plant soil, uh, which a large part of that also was used to cover landfills. Uh, here in Sweden, we have uh, in the north of Sweden, uh, Arctic Bolidens uh, 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 copper mine, uh, and a lot of sludge is used to cover the mine tailings uh, and also to cover uh, old landfills uh, within the countries. Uh, so in Sweden we have only uh, the recycling of phosphorus in agriculture is relatively limited. It is around 23-25%. Uh, and most of it is, is going to, to, to cover landfills. Uh, if you look at the sl sludge quality in Sweden, uh, it has been uh, improved quite a lot. Uh, uh, from the 17th today. And this is due to upstream work to try to exclude uh, uh, polluting sources uh, into coming into the wastewater treatment plant. And if you look at cadmium here, which is an important heavy metal, we can see that, that uh, the cadmium concentration in seaweed sludge have declined with time. Uh, to, to a considerably lower levels. What we also can see here is that, that uh, the decline in heavy metal concentration, if we take cadmium as example, ha has leveled off, which means that today it becomes more and more difficult to improve the sludge quality. We are taking all the, the, the big measure to, to reduce pollutants. So it becomes more and more difficult to, to, to improve the quality uh, further by upstream uh, work. Uh, and if you look at the legislation in Sweden, it follows the sludge quality. Uh, if we see that this is the target uh, value, we have examples for cadmium and mercury legislation, the limits in, in seaweed sludge. Uh, and the target value for 1988 is set as 100%. And then we can see that with times, the limit have been uh, uh, lowered. And now we have also proposals for, for limits, also for the future. And the trend is that in future, uh, there will be lower limits for heavy metals in seaweed sludge. Today in Sweden, there are limits for these metals. Uh, there are proposed also new limits, or to include also limits for silver and also organic contaminants. Uh, I think it's five different uh, organic contaminants that uh, it is discussed to have limits for them. 
And there is also proposed legislation regarding sanitation of sewage sludge. Today, uh, the sanitation of sewage sludge is based on storing the sludge for a certain period of time, and then you can apply it. But now the Swedish EPA uh, uh, proposed to, 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 to have active disinfection methods such as uh, therm thermal processes or, or uh, chemical processes to, to di disinfect the sludge. Uh, so what we, we can see is that th there is a change in legislation and, and, and it will continue also in, in future. Uh, here in Sweden we have also a Swedish certification system for wastewater treatments that wants to spread the sludge in agriculture. It is named uh, REVAC. Uh, and uh, the idea of the REVAC uh, certification system is that the wastewater treatment plants should work upstream to exclude polluting sources into the wastewater treatment plant and by that reduce metal content in sludge. Uh, and the wastewater treatment plant has to show an improvement uh, in order to, 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 to uh, get an approved sludge according to this system. Uh, in 2014, the limit for REVAC sludge for cadmium was 30 milligram cadmium per kilogram phosphorus. And the goal is to uh, reduce this, this, this limit to 17 milligrams cadmium per kilogram phosphorus at 2025. Uh, and this equals around 0 0.45 milligram cadmium per kilogram dry matter. Uh, this is the situation in 2014. We have uh, the approved sludge, according to REVAC, for spreading in sewage sludge, the not approved sludge, and the majority of the wastewater treatment plants are not uh, certified, uh, REVAC certified. Uh, today, the mean cadmium content in, in sewage sludge is one milligram cadmium per dry matter. In future, uh, in order to, to, to be approved, uh, the, cadmium con the mean cadmium content sh must be lowered by 50%. And already today, it's difficult to reduce the cadmium content by upstream work, as you could see in this figure. The, the, uh, so what we expect is that in future, more of the non-certified wastewater treatment pl plants would like to get a certification. And since this is the situation today with these high levels, so in future with more strict levels, we expect that the non-approved sludge will increase. And in future, we will see two sludge qualities in Sweden, uh, a high quality that is approved for use in agriculture and the low-quality sludge that does not fulfill the criteria for being used in, in agriculture. Uh, Rangsells is, is, a, is a major player uh, in handling seaweed sludge in Sweden. Uh, it handles around 150,000 tons of uh, dewatered sludge per year, which is around 15% of the produced sludge in Sweden. 80% uh, of that sludge is used in, in agriculture and 20% as plant soil and application are green area, golf courses and to cover uh, landfills. Uh, and I want to share with you Rangsell's uh, thoughts about the future. Uh, what Rangsell sees a uh, continued strong opinion both for and against spreading of sludge in agriculture. We, we see also tightened limits for metals in sewage sludge and also a change in legislation regarding sanitation of sewage sludge. Uh, it is not allowed to dispose sewage sludge in landfills from 2005. And we also know that the uh, use of sludge to cover landfill will decrease in future. Uh, the, the capacity is decreasing due to that landfills are being closed. So what we see is that, that further development is needed to, to, to meet these uh, future requirements. 
Uh, what we can, can also see is that, that the costs of current sludge management can be expected to increase due to, for instance, requirement for sanitation of sludge used for alternative treatments such as cover of landfills. If we need to active disinfect it, then it will cost money uh, 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 to do that. And uh, this means that uh, alternatives means for sludge treatment will become more and more important in future. And uh, it can give the possibility to offer solutions where the cost level is, is uh, slightly higher. If you look at, at uh, the possibilities uh, of, of recycling phosphorus uh, from toilet wastes, we have uh, in general four main possibilities uh, to separate urine from feces in special toilets and to use urine as a fertilizer, to recover phosphorus from the wastewater in wastewater treatment plant, to spread sludge in agriculture and to burn the sludge and to extract phosphorus uh, from the ash. Uh, what we see in rank cells is we, we believe that urine separation uh, will not be applied in large scale in, in the foreseeable future. Uh, and this is due to their very high cost with, with having uh, two different pipe systems. You have uh, logistical problems uh, of, of uh, scaling and, and, and uh, uh, logistical problems of, of uh, using it as a fertilizer. Urine separation is a, a very good solution for, for locally in summer houses and, and, and in less developed countries. Uh, you can recycle uh, not only phosphorus, also nitrogen and, and uh, a large part of potassium. Uh, but we don't believe that this is, will be a, a, a large scale application in Sweden for, for the cities. Uh, Another possibility is to recover phosphorus from the wastewater in wastewater treatment plants. And the main technology there is to precipitate phosphorus in form of strovite, uh, magnesium ammonium phosphate, from a side stream in the wastewater treatment process. Uh, the problem with this technology is that the potential for phosphorus recovery is limited. It's around 25%. Uh, this is due to that you can only recover phosphorus from the liquid phase. You have al al always also phosphorus in the solid phase, which you cannot recover. Uh, another problem is that in order to get these 25% of phosphorus, you need to modify the existing wastewater treatment plant to have a bio-P process and to exclude addition of iron and aluminium chemicals. Uh, and this means that the, the efficiency of cleaning the wastewater will be lower. And uh, therefore, we don't believe that this is an, an, an alternative for Sweden, in where we have uh, very strict uh, limits for discharge of phosphorus in the treated wastewater. Uh, so so uh, we don't think that this will be applied in, in large scale in Sweden. Uh, there is the possibility to spread seaweed sludge in agriculture. This is done today in Sweden. Uh, Rangsells is spreading seaweed sludge and uh, this application will probably continue in future for the, the sludge of high quality that fulfills the, the criteria for using it in agriculture. Uh, for the sludge of low quality, uh, we believe that uh, uh, we are working now on a solution to burn the sludge and to recover phosphorus uh, from the ash. And I will continue with this concept. And he here is Rangsell's uh, concept for sustainable sludge management. Here you see the whole uh, uh, flow of phosphorus. Phosphorus is mined in, in a mine, processed into fertilizers, which are used in agriculture uh, to produce foods, which ends up in waste, uh, in wastewater treatment plants and become sludge. Sludge of high quality uh, will be recycled to agriculture land, and sludge of low quality will be burned and uh, from the ash, uh, uh, it is possible to recover phosphorus and a certain part of precipitation chemicals. 
so this is the ideas, rank cells ideas for the sludge of, of uh, low quality. Uh, and in this project, we worked with several parts. One part is to prepare uh, a fuel from seaweed sludge. Uh, seaweed sludge is a quite wet material. It contains around 70% water, uh, so it doesn't burn well. Uh, and uh, the idea in, within rung cells is to convert it into a fuel that can be incinerated in existing uh, uh, power plant in Sweden. So you don't need to invest in, in uh, dedicated plants for, for burning the sludge. Uh, and there are two ways of, of, of uh, transforming sludge into a fuel. One is to mix uh, the wet sludge with uh, other materials that have a high uh, energy value and low water content and they should have a low ash content also if you don't want to dilute the ash with, with uh, uh, the phosphorus in the ash. And then another way which we are looking at is different dewatering techniques. There are new development in these fields to, 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 to dewater uh, sludge. Uh, in this picture you can see this is a sludge fuel which we made by, by mixing seaweed sludge with, with the wood chips. Uh, these are large-scale trials here in Sweden. Uh, we, we burned more than a thousand tons sludge in this way. Here you can see the transport into the incinerator. Uh, so the first part is to collect the sludge of low quality and to uh, uh, process it into a fuel. And then the idea is to, to uh, incinerate the the sewage sludge fuel in existing plant. We have a very large incineration capacity here in Sweden. And in this way we can use the, the infrastructure that exists in Sweden. And an advantage of, of, of uh, the incinerators in Sweden are that they can uh, uh, utilize the heat for the heating system, which you don't have in, in, in other countries. Uh, if you look at ash of incinerated seaweed sludge, so it is a, a very concentrated phosphorus raw material. This is if you burn uh, seaweed sludge alone, mono incineration. You can see that the phosphorus concentration is uh, slightly lower than appetite. This is rock phosphate, the, the raw material for phosphorus fertilizers, but we are in the same range. Of course, if you co-incinerate the sludge with other material, you dilute the phosphorus content. So you need to choose uh, the right material to co-incinerate the sludge. So you won't dilute it uh, too much. Uh, you can see that if you burn seaweed sludge in mono incineration, you can get different colors. The red color here is uh, due to the iron content in this sludge. It originates from a wastewater treatment that use iron as uh, phosphorus precipitation chemicals. And in this case, aluminum is used. So the ash has a gray uh, color. Uh, and then when we get the ash, uh, uh, the phosphorus ends up in the ash after burning the seaweed sludge. Uh, we have developed the process to, to recover phosphorus from the ash. It is based on a wet process. We dissolve the ash with, with an acid. The main chemicals are uh, acid and uh, lime. Uh, we're looking at uh, different waste, using waste acid as well. And in the process, we can produce uh, a clean phosphorus products independent on the uh, contamination of the, of, of the ash. Uh, we uh, recover some industrial products. Uh, it's the calcium in form of uh, gypsum or calcium chloride and a certain part of the, the iron and aluminium uh, precipitation chemicals can be recovered and recycled to a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and the heavy metals are uh, separated for, for uh, uh, disposal. Uh, this is a, a schematic description of the, the sludge ash uh, process. 
Uh, it is a wet process. We dissolve the ash. Uh, we separate the sand residue, with, which is the insoluble material, which uh, will be landfilled. Uh, we can recover the calcium in form of gypsum or calcium chloride separately in, in, in uh, uh, pure, clean, clean uh, form. Uh, and then phosphorus can be recovered in, in two forms, uh, uh, either as a feed phosphate to use as a fooder source, uh, it's a calcium phosphate, or in form of uh, ammonium phosphate uh, as a fertilizer. Uh, iron and aluminium, we can recover around uh, between uh, 15 and 30 percent of the iron and 60 to 80 percent of the aluminium in the ash. And can recycle it to, to, to the wastewater treatment plant and separate the heavy metals for uh, disposal. Uh, and we have uh, reuse of the process solution. Uh, we have a certain bleed which we neutralize uh, clean and we need to, to release. Uh, about the recovered product, uh, they are clean and well-known product. Uh, uh, we have, as I said, calcium phosphate for feed phosphates, ammonium phosphate. Uh, uh, this is option to recover the phosphorus. And uh, the iron aluminium can be recovered in form of iron chloride and aluminium sulfate and used as precipitation chemicals. F uh, calcium can be recovered as calcium chloride and gypsum and heavy metals separated for landfill. And we have the residue which, which uh, we will landfill. Uh, here you see these are products recovered from Swedish uh, sludge which was co-incinerated with, with uh, wood chips. Uh, we have uh, ammonium phosphate, uh, aluminium sul sulfate and iron chloride and these are the chemicals that are used today for, for phosphorus removal in wastewater treatment plants. Uh, now, uh, regarding incineration of sewage sludge and phosphorus recovery, if we go quickly through advantages and disadvantages, the advantages are that by burning the sludge, we reduce the volume and mass by 90%. We have also a complete sanitation. The incineration is uh, around 900 degrees. We get the complete uh, destruction of uh, disease-causing elements. Uh, we destroy also organic uh, contaminants and heavy metals are removed. It's a kind of uh, at we detoxified society by removing heavy metals for disposal. Another advantage is, is that phosphorus is recovered in concentrated and pure form. And also uh, it has a high uh, plant availability if used as fertilizer or uh, uh, animal feed. Uh, the disadvantages uh, for uh, burning sludge and recovering phosphorus are loss of nitrogen and loss of uh, organic content. And I would like to say some words about the disadvantages. If we take nitrogen, uh, in sewage sludge we have around 20% of the incoming nitrogen to the wastewater that ends up in sewage sludge. 80% is removed in the wastewater treatment process. Uh, nitrogen in sewage sludge the plant availability is relatively low and the total amounts if we take all the nitrogen in Swedish sewage sludge is around uh, three to five percent of the nitrogen requirement in uh, fertilizer so so the amounts are not uh, very large this is in the total sludge if we incinerate the low quality sludge it's only a portion of that and and most important of all is that nitrogen is not a non-renewable resource. Uh, air contains around 80% nitrogen and nitrogen can be recovered chemically uh, from air or biologically by nitrogen fixation. Uh, regarding loss of organic content, uh, sewage sludge is a good source of organic content if it is applied locally to a field. You, you can see a good effect of the organic content. Uh, but in total, if we take a look at the, the amount of, of organic 
uh, content in Swedish sludge in total and compare it to uh, crop residues, so the, it's in the order of 2.5%. Uh, so it's not a big source of organic uh, matter to, to agriculture. So again, if you incinerate the, the sludge of low quality, uh, uh, you can, uh, it, it's not, uh, uh, you, you can easily uh, uh, use other sources of organic material instead. Uh, so we believe that uh, this solution is, is, is uh, uh, quite sustainable for uh, treating sludge of uh, low quality. Uh, so with this process, we would like to close the phosphorus cycle for sludge of low quality uh, and by producing fertilizer from ash, we can use it in agriculture, produce food, uh, which will result in sludge, which will be incinerated and we, we can close the cycle. Uh, now, you are probably familiar with this, with this figure, with circular economy. Uh, we have the one-way flow from mine through society to incineration and disposal, and we would like to increase the recycling. This is the, the aim in society. But today we are still stuck in this one-way flow. And w w w what I want to say is that if we compare recovery of phosphorus from ash to mining of rock phosphate from, from, from soil, then uh, the rules today are that if we recover phosphorus from ash, we need to pay a disposal tax on the residues, which is 450 crowns per ton. Uh, the phosphate industry, they don't need to pay tax on the residues. And this is quite logical if you think about LKAB, the iron mine in Sweden, if they have to pay 450 crowns per ton of mine tailings that they put on, they can close the business, it doesn't work. So wh what it means that the conditions are not uh, the same. Uh, uh, so today it is much more cheaper to uh, recover phosphorus from uh, virgin soil instead of doing it from waste just because of, of, of tax and energy tax and, and carbon dioxide emissions. So we don't have the same conditions. And if we want to, to uh, uh, have more of more recycling, we should in some way, see that we will have the same conditions. Uh, another disadvantage is that if you recycle phosphorus from ash, it is much smaller scale compared to the mining industry, which is a larger scale. So then production costs are lower per ton if you have a very large scale. Uh, so our requests from authorities and legislations are that first, that as much as possible of the phosphorus in seaweed sludge shall be returned to arable land. And also that uh, we request national guidelines that require phosphorus recovery if sludge is incinerated. Otherwise, we risk that uh, sludge will be burned and be disposed. You can burn sludge in cement industry and you will not recover the phosphorus. And also we, we would like to see clear and long term uh, regulation concerning re the recycling of phosphorus. And I would like to end this uh, talk with this drawing that I, I was published in a Swedish uh, newspaper and, and uh, uh, I received it from a colleague. I thought it will be a nice picture to end uh, the talk. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.